All right, problem 26, we have um, at a city department of transportation study traffic congestion on a certain highway and to encourage carpooling, the department will recommend a carpool lane if the average number of passengers if the average number of people in passenger cars on the highway is less than two, and the probability distribution of the number of people in passenger cars on the highway is shown in the table. So based on this distribution, what's the mean number of people in passenger cars on the highway? Okay, so this is basically um, an example of a random variable. So we want to essentially find the mean or the expected value of this random variable, and we'll just call it x. And that's essentially the weighted average of each of the individual x values. So remember, this is this, these are their possible values for x. One, two, three, four, five. And what this equation says that you take that value and you multiply it by its corresponding probability. You, you sum all of them up. 1 times 0. 0.6 plus 2 times 0. 0.28 plus 3 times 0. 0.08 plus 4 times 0. 0.06 plus 5 times 0. 0.02. And let's just leave the start calculator to get to work. We get 0. 0.56 plus Two times 0.28 plus three times 0.08 plus four times 0.06 plus five times 0.02. I just realized I wasn't typing multiplying. So it's three times 0.08 here. Let's see. Plus four times 0 0.06 plus five times 0.02. All right, so we should get 1.7. And this will give us answer C. Um, now you don't have to memorize this formula. Remember, remember your, in your um, formula sheet, there's all these formulas that you can use so what we're looking at here is this. This is the expected value of x. But make sure you understand this notation. This sigma symbol means sum them up, the probability of each corresponding x value. To compare the effectiveness of two treatments, researchers conducted a well-designed experiment using a randomized block design in which Subjects were blocked by age group under 40 years and 40 years or older, which the following must be true about the randomized block design of the experiment. Okay, so um, remember what a block design is. It's essentially like um, the same concept of a stratified sample, except in regards to experiments. So you basically break the subjects into groups of similar individuals according to some variable. Like according to some characteristic, maybe so. So again, see like maybe the um maybe it was well you know like it's, it's probably it's, the probably age had a uh, age probably had a significant factor on the effectiveness of these treatments. So they want to make they want to block their age. They group them on they group them based on their age under forty and over forty. Well, let's just go through these. So here we got. The number of treatment, the number of subjects in each block is different. Um, now it says must be true. It doesn't have to be true. It just, this could happen sometimes just based on um, just the number of people you, you get in the study. But this doesn't have to be true. It's actually better if they were the same. But it's not going to be A. B, treatments are randomly assigned to subjects within each block. Yeah, so this is what you want. So essentially you have you have your subjects broken into like, like block A, so let's say under 40, over 40. And then from here, you split the under 40 group according to being according to the treatment 
by but you be you, you randomly assign it. So maybe they get a let's say treatment treatment one. Let's say T is say T1, and this and these subjects could get treatment two. And you do that same sort of thing for the other block. You randomly assign treatment one to some of the subjects and treatment two to the other subjects. So within each block, you're gonna have random assignments. Um, let me just briefly talk about the other ones. The design cannot have a control group because subjects are blocked by age group. That's not necessarily true. They can still have a control group. Remember, it's saying must be true. The experiment used a match pair design where subjects from one block are paired with subjects from the other block. No, it does, it's not. <laughs> um, no, because they're blocked by age group. You have the 40 year olds, or you have the, over, the under 40 separated for the over 40, so they're not going to be paired up with each other. And yeah, so it's not going to be E. It's not going to be that this group is not just going to receive one treatment and the other group won't. Is not going to just receive the other treatment. Again, within each block, you're going to make sure that each group gets randomly assigned treatments. So the answer is definitely B. Twenty-eight. All right, die used in a certain board game it has eight faces, of which three are, three are red, three are yellow, and two are blue. Each face is equally likely to land face up when the die is tossed. In the game, a player tosses the die until blue lands face up, and the number of tosses before blue lands face up is counted. For example, the player who tosses the sequence shown in the following table has tossed the die three times before the blue lands face up. So we want to find the probability that the player will toss and die at least two times before blue lands face up. So we want to find the probability that you're going to have a color other than blue on your first toss, the probability of either getting a yellow or red. This is toss one. And if you need to get and if you need to get this two times, you're going to multiply this by, again, getting the, a, a yellow or a red. So by, you're going to multiply by the probability of getting a yellow or a red. Because these are independent. Now, it doesn't matter what you got on the first top. I mean, this is toss one. This is toss two. So as long as you got yellow or red on both tosses in a row, you're, you're um, still going to be, you know, rolling die. Now, um, what's the probability of getting a yellow or red? Just think of it as one toss at a time. So there's um, one, there's, no, sorry, there's, there's three red and three yellow out of eight. So there's out of eight possibilities, six of them are either yellow or red. So this is six eighths. And same thing, and since again, the die, you know, it's not a, if they're independent, you get, you get, you can still roll the same thing again. So it's just six eighths times six eighths. So 36 over 64. Mm -hmm. And the decimal approximation, it's probably going to be a little more than that. Guessing. Yeah, 0.5625. So the answer will be D. Okay. 